Hi and welcome to this tutorial for Fast Lane, the digital audio school in France down in Montpellier. This is for the Frogs Certified Ableton Trainer. So for our very first English tutorial, I'm going to show you a technique that's very dear to me since I've been using it on stage for a very long time. Using this technique, you'll be able to create very convincing transitions by triggering drum rolls, drum feels, just like a drummer would in a band to hint the next section of the track to the crowd. So before I show you how to put this together, let me show you the effect it has and how it's being used. I've got a track here made with the students in the classroom this week and I've added two drum fills, these clips here on the beat track okay so i'm going to use the push here to trigger these two clips and create convincing drum rolls and transitions let's do it <laughs> So how is this done? Well, first of all, I think we ought to look at the clips I've triggered and see how they are put together. Well, first of all, the very short clip, you see, they're only two bits long. Okay, you can verify this using the length value here, zero, two, zero, two bits. So from there, you go over to the launch box. This box has quite a few different parameters. The one I'm interested in is the quantization. The quantization here is set to two bits to half a measure. By default, this would be set to global. You know the global quantization is over there on the top of the screen. This global quantization regulates how responsive the clips are when you trigger them, either by using a push or either using your mouse. So I don't want this to be set to one bar like the global quantization is. I want this to be set much more spontaneous. So I can trigger this halfway through a measure and have the drum fill coming on the beat number three. So I'm going to set that to half a bar. Then I've also set some follow actions. This function enables us to create a structure in the session view. You can decide how long the clip will play for and what it's going to do next. And what I've asked this clip to do is to play for two bits and then play the previous clip in the group of clips. The clips are considered in the same group when they are consecutive, when there's no blank slot in between them. So this clip will play for two bars and then trigger this clip. Let's have a look. I'm going to solo the channel, hit the drum fill, and it will straight away trigger the next clip. And that's extremely convenient. You see, if I do not set any follow actions, let's see what happens. I trigger the clip, and it plays again and again, which is quite dramatic on stage, you'll admit. So you'd rather have these follow actions, so it's quite safe now. You can trigger this clip, and automatically it will play for two bits, do its thing, and then trigger the next clip or the previous clip. So how is this put together? Gather. Let's go and get and fetch some kind of drum fills. I've got quite a few here. Right, obviously, I'm looking for good quality sounding clips. Percussive, dynamic. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's drag that clip over to the first track, the drum track. Let's solo the track again, and let's listen to the clip. So I do not want any warp markers. I select the first one, come day selects them all, delete. Cool, let's hear it now. All right, that's the drum feel I need. Cool, that's the start point. Set one, one, one here, and then drag the 
next down beat to the actual ruler. So we have a drum fill here that's only one bit long. Okay, that's a bit short, but we'll see what we can do with that. Great, I'm going to loop that bit and I'm going to drag it to a brand new track. Come on, T, and drag it to a brand new track. Why? Well, because I need to do a few modifications to that clip. First of all, if you look at the waveform, the left hand side, the top waveform is much louder, much more dynamic than the right hand side waveform, which is the bottom one. Cool. So I can use the utility plugin and use only one side of the waveform, one side of the file. Let's do that and set it to left. Play it. Cool, that's quite dynamic. Let's listen to the right hand side. Yeah, nothing like it. I much prefer the left hand side. I can also apply a little bit of a high pass to get rid of the boominess in there. And finally, I'm going to make it a little bit sharper using the off mode on the beat warping mode. Set the off mode and lower the value here to get a little bit more staccato feel. Not that much. Yeah, that's a bit cleaner. Great, I now need to apply these changes, the EQ, the utility, and the warping mode. I need to apply this to print this onto the clip. To do that, I'll go over to the tracks header, right click, freeze the track, right click again, and flatten the track. Once this is done, I can bring it back to the actual track it belongs to and delete the unnecessary track. Great, now let's set the launch box, the launch options. I want to set this up to a beat so I can trigger this at any bit. Of course it's a beat long clip. Oh something I forgot by the way. I need to crop the clip because when you freeze it it doubles its length right there. And there we go. Now back to the launch box. I'm gonna make this play for one bit and then set it to play the previous clip. Now I can trigger it. Perfect. Maybe a bit louder. Excellent. Let's listen to that in context. And now, two, three. Yeah. See how versatile this is. Excellent. So you see. It's quite easy, quite simple to put together. For it to be efficient, you really need some really good drum beat, something that has a lot of dynamic that matches a little bit the dynamic of your track. Best even, you can actually write your drum fills with your MIDI pattern as you are writing your tracks. And you can extract these drum fills, maybe bounce them as audio to use them on stage. I mean, it's up to you. I don't know what your stage setup is. I personally use a lot of audio because, well, one Ableton document plays a lot of different songs and then I need to, you know, do a lot of compromises here. And so audio is somehow the most versatile uh, format for me. I mean, I've got a few sounds in MIDI, but, you know, um, drums are definitely audio. I mean, some of the drums are definitely audio. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these tips. I'll see you again in some other tutorial for Fastlane. Please go and check our website, www.fastlane.fr.